For those of you who don't know us, Public Knowledge is a nonprofit public interest advocacy group. We focus on consumer rights in, in digital technology. And a big part of why we were founded 10 years ago was to be a consumer voice on copyright issues here in Washington. So fair use is very near and dear to our heart. Uh, fair use is very near and dear to our heart, and so we're always very excited when World's Fair Use Day comes around every year. World's Fair Use Day is really designed to be a day to remind policymakers that there are people all, all over the country outside of Washington who are relying on fair use to do the creative, innovative things that they do every day, and that fair use isn't just a reason that the content holders can't sue everyone they want to sue every time. It's really valuable. In a lot of ways, it is what makes creativity possible. Because creativity, as we all know, builds on culture. And so often when you are building on culture, you need to do so immediately without permission to do so in a way that creates new, great culture. Sometimes we forget how important fair use, say, fair use is, and that's you know in terms of, especially in journalism and in reporting, it can fade away in the background. But journalism also reminds us that uh, you know, there's some more controversial uses of fair use. And so it's great to be able to take a day and step back and say, fair use is, is really important and really has value and really is everywhere. Today, we have a number of panels and a number of speakers we're very excited about. The first, as I said, is journalism, and it's true. Sometimes in journalism, fair use is so uncontroversial we don't see it. We don't even think when a reporter finds incriminating emails from government or businesses doing horrible things, that they can, they can, they can show those emails to the world and not worry about being sued for copyright infringement. But there are also more controversial uses of fair use. And a lot of times those new controversial uses are, are really just new uses. And people trying to find new ways to package and summarize and aggregate information. But it's worth having a discussion as to how those work and what role they play. And so that will be part of our first panel. We're then honored to have a keynote from the former Poet Laureate of the United States, Robert Pinsky. Mr. Pinsky right now is working on a project called the Favorite Poem Project. And this project invites people to engage with poetry and in doing so create their own new experience. And that's fantastic. That's exactly the kind of thing that fair use allows you to do, to create new experiences with the culture that you know and you love. We then have a panel on fashion and copyright. Now, I love talking about fashion and copyright, not just because I'm, I'm so fashionable, which I am. <laughs> it, because fashion is an industry that really shows us that it's possible to have rapid and innovative and economically viable creativity without needing a very heavy intellectual property regime. The people in the fashion industry they create every day, and most of their effort is focused on creating and creating something new. That's where their time and their money is spent. It's not spent as much, although sometimes it is, hiring lawyers and suing each other. And it shows us that it's possible to do this, to create this kind of community, and not just community, but to create this kind of industry. We then have a panel on poetry and fair use, and as many of you know, Poetry so often relies on the ability to evoke emotions and places and ideas and themes. And it can use existing cultural artifacts as guideposts to do so. It uses culture to create culture. And so fair use is critical for that. And then finally, we have a keynote from Kirby Ferguson. Kirby Ferguson exploded onto the stage, or at least exploded onto our stage, with a series of videos called Everything is a Remix. And what Everything is a Remix did, it, it, he did exactly what you're supposed to do. Instead of, show, instead of telling people that everything is a remix, he showed people that everything is a remix. He put scenes from movies side by side. He showed songs one after the other. 
And it was a vivid illustration, impossible to ignore, that great cultural artifacts that we all love and value did not just appear out of the ether. But they really flowed and built on existing culture and great cultural artifacts that came before them, which in fact built on great cultural artifacts that came before them, and before them, and so on and so forth. And that doesn't detract from the greatness of the cultural artifact that we're talking about now. It just recognizes that it's part of a process that builds upon what exists, and that culture comes from culture. So that's really what World's Fair You Stay is all about, is celebrating that and taking a day to recognize that. And without me talking any longer, I will, uh, I will hand it over to Joe and uh, our first panel. Thank you.